Hi there and welcome back, you're with Terry from Bonsai Tree and today I'm going to be showing you how to cheat in Bonsai. This cheat is commonly known as a phoenix craft or tanuki in Japanese and for it you're going to need a dead trunk. We'll discuss this trunk selection as well as preparation. I'll show you what is considered healthy foliage and what foliage you can remove when cleaning a juniper. I'll show you a neat little trick for working with limp foliage on junipers. I'll demonstrate several wiring techniques as well as when transitioning to thinner wire how to anchor the thick wire to the branch. And we'll also consider one way of constructing or building a foliage pad. If you find the following content helpful, then you can thank me by clicking the thanks button just below the video. I started this tanuki in 2021, and in a very short space of time, I'm really surprised to see the amazing development of this tree. Let me start off this video by addressing the burning question that I'm sure many of you have, which is why create a tanuki in the first place? The simplest answer to this question is that if you are wanting to add a juniper with a very nice live vein in it and lots of dead wood, and you live in South Africa, Africa, the only way that you're probably going to get that is by creating a tanuki as we do not have the material available to us that some countries do where you can collect beautiful yamadori with those qualities. The basis of any tanuki is going to be a dead trunk. This trunk that I'm using was a juniper growing in a parking lot that I collected but didn't make it. Rather than to allow the trunk to go to waste I decided that I would make a phoenix graft or tanuki with it. I first used a wire brush with a drill to remove the bark. Next I used a die grinder fitted with a nibbler 6mm R type bit to do some carving work. I then took the trunk for bead blasting which is a much harsher treatment than sand blasting. This created a slight surface relief between the soft and harder grains of the wood as well as left with more of a texture on the surface. The living tree would be a mint julep which is a commonly found and strong growing juniper in this area and I split the tree in half. One half of the juniper was secured to the prepared contours of the deadwood trunk using cable ties and screws. Two years later and you can see the trunk has formed very nicely against the deadwood and has started to heal over the scars that were left by the screws. One of the main objectives with working the tree today will be to compact the foliage a little bit. The method I'll be using to do that is to cut back to growth which is now strong enough. Next I'll apply some thin aluminium wire to these branches and then direct them into the positions that I wish them to grow in. It's important that you try to avoid crushing foliage against the branch when you're applying this wire, so try work delicately in between the foliage. I would normally terminate my wiring with a slight pigtail which is a bend at the end of the wire. In order to support this rather limp foliage I enlarge this pigtail quite significantly. It is often considered a taboo to cross wires when wiring bonsai trees. However, when you're applying wire to so many portions of growth, it is almost a certainty that you would need to do this. The reason why you should avoid crossing wires if at all possible is really only that if you wire thick wire or place thick wire over thinner wire, it can cause this wire to be forced into the branch and creating a severe wire bite or damage. To avoid such a scenario, always apply the thick wire first and then if you need to you can cross over with thinner wire. To create a foliage pad with volume it's important that you position wired branches at various heights. If you need to make compact bends on a wired branch a gin pliers is a very useful tool. 
when I'm going through this tree and pruning the foliage back, as I mentioned, my objective would be, this is the kind of foliage that I'd be looking to keep on the tree. This is healthy, vigorously, vigorously growing foliage. Test if you've cut the branch short enough by bending the branch down with your fingers to see its relationship to the surrounding branches. The invisible outline or contour of the foliage pad that you're creating should be rounded. Each growing tip should be equally distributed around the pad and also be angled slightly upwards towards the sun as this will add extra vigor to the branch. A piece of white paper positioned below this finished foliage pad that I've just created will help to demonstrate some of the techniques and comments that I've made. You can clearly see the branches reaching out to an imaginary contour which is very rounded. You will also notice that the branches do not take on a very exaggerated bend, they are more sinuous to mirror or replicate that of the trunk. Another method of creating a foliage pad is to use left and right branching as well as the branches on top to create volume. The side branching is alternating between left and right with sufficient space for growth between them. Removing weaker inner growth as well as growth which is growing downwards helps to speed up wiring considerably. This needle or juvenile foliage is a response to stress. It's best to leave this foliage alone. Don't remove this foliage and in time the juniper will produce more of the adult or scale type of foliage. When you start wiring a branch, especially when they are fairly opposite, ensure that you make at least two coils around the one side before completing the so-called bullhorn on the other side and then continuing with that wire on the branch. Those pigtails that I referred to earlier should not be created too tightly as this will restrict the growth of the foliage. When manipulating or positioning the wired branches, try to keep the angles quite gentle to the primary branch that they're, they're growing from. When positioning the growing tips, they should be spaced apart to allow each one to get a fair amount of sun and also to allow those branches to develop with this kind of limp foliage taken into account. This juniper was wired not too long ago and this wire has yet to start biting in but the tree has extended and so I'm using a lot of the wire that is on the tree to still keep the branches in position but adding more wire to this to allow for the extensions that have grown since then. It is important with wired junipers not to remove the wire too prematurely as the branch will simply remove return to this position that it was in before. So you need to wait until the wire is biting in quite considerably before you consider removing it and if you do remove it remove only the portion or that section up until where the wire is biting in.
Sometimes you will need to transition from a thicker wire to thin on a branch. Using the thinner wire, it's important to anchor this thick wire to the branch because if not, then when you put a bend in the branch, that thick wire is going to pull away and will not be able to support the branch. Lifting the terminal end of the branch doesn't seem like it would make much of a difference but it does to the vitality of that branch and so lift the terminals up at about a 45 degree angle. Once the branch is in position you can neaten up the underside of the pad by removing any foliage that is hanging down. Foliage pads in the upper portion of the tree tend to be a little bit more compact and also more defined than branches or foliage pads in the lower portions of the tree. To create added interest to the tree, the foliage pads should be positioned at different heights and not all on the same level. This is essentially playing with the negative and positive spaces, the negative being the space between the pads and the positive of course being the pad itself. At this point in time the apex is being created in terms of its foundation for the future and so the available branches are really just being positioned roughly to create that structure or scaffolding on which future branches will be added and those will create density. Ultimately the apex is treated as pretty much one solid mass of foliage although definition can be cut into it using scissors, but for the moment it is going to be sparsely populated with branches. If you found that content helpful and you'd like to thank me for it, please do so now by clicking the thanks button just below the video. These scars that are visible in the trunk are remnants of the damage caused by inserting the screws which hold the trunk against the dead part or the dead wood. I suspect that in a season they will be completely healed over. What's likely to take longer is this damage caused by the screws or inserting the screws and then that portion of the live vein actually dying back. I do believe however that the live vein will expand and eventually cover this damage. Splitting the live juniper and then attaching it to the surface of the dead trunk has produced a very pleasing result in the sense that there is no real visible gaps between the two trunks. An alternative technique would have been to carve a groove into the dead trunk and in that to lay the whip of the live juniper. As the whip thickened it would secure itself into that groove meaning that you wouldn't necessarily have to use screws to also secure it in place and then eventually it would mushroom out and spread as a live vein and give you that pronounced effect or swollen live vein appearance. To reduce the risk of the dead trunk rotting, I've elevated it slightly above the su surface of the growing medium. The most important consideration is that you don't want growing medium that is almost always wet in contact with the dead wood as this will cause the rotting to take place. Staying on the subject of deadwood, I'm very happy with the results of the deadwood work that I originally did, followed up by the bead blasting, or shot blasting rather. The wood seems to be aging very well, taking on a nice appearance, an aged appearance, due to the weathering that is happening to it over the seasons, and also as the tree has, the deadwood has not been treated with any preservative yet. The weathering which I referred to a second ago has also been enhanced by the fact that the bead or shot blast also created a texture on the surface which is picking up more of the dirt and other airborne particulates that are floating around. I will probably not treat the dead wood with anything yet for the next few years still and this will allow the weathering to continue to take place and for this characteristic to set in even more.
in the future I'd like to continue compacting the foliage so that the growth higher up on the tree is set back from growth lower down. With that said, it brings me to the end of today's video. Love them or hate them, Tanuki as a cheat in bonsai's year to stay. And I also think it's another opportunity to really stretch your uh, creative and artistic muscles. 